Hello and welcome back to my channel for my Doctor Who collection update for October 2021. In this video I'll be taking a look, as ever, at all the Doctor Who merchandise I've added to my collection in the past month or so. So we begin, as ever, with Doctor Who magazine. This is issue 570 and it's a deluxe bumper issue to celebrate the start of series 13. So there's basically Jodie era content on every other page in this issue. So we've got a preview for the series which strangely actually doesn't mention the episode titles which hadn't been announced I believe at the time this issue was released. Uh, Rusty Davis also making a little cameo appearance in the Gallifrey Guardian. Loads of stuff about the new Sontarans, about the costumes, and then also about the makeup as well, and just the general design process for those guys. There's Out of the TARDIS with Vinder actor Jacob Anderson, uh, some other bits and pieces as well. The return of the comic strip as well, if I can just find it. There it is, a really lovely new story for the Doctor and Yaz, a collectivity column all about the 30th Doctor. You also get various other bits and pieces, including uh, this lovely guide to the making of Series 12, written by Andrew Pixley. Oh my god, this is just to die for, the information in here. All about you know the scripting process, the filming process, it lists every single location that was used and all the, the dates and stuff for the filming. Um, if you're a nerd like me and love that sort of stuff, then this is a real, real treat. I mean, just for instance there, the production timeline for Series 12, it's got all the, the key dates for when episodes started filming and finished and etc. It's just really, really great. I think the only complaint I have about this is that it wasn't released sooner, because of course Series 12 was on now, like, what, coming up to two years ago? God, that's absolutely mad to say that out loud, but yeah, it is, isn't it? You also get these printouts representing the Fifth Doctor's console room of the TARDIS. We had a season 14 one back in lockdown, then a Chris Freckleston RTD TARDIS as well. And then finally you also get these lovely four A5 art cards representing the sort of TARDIS team for series 13. So you've got this lovely image of the 13th Doctor, Judge Whittaker there. You've got Mandip Girl as Yasmin Khan, John Bishop as Dan Lewis, and then Jacob Anderson as Vinder. They are really, really nice. And it's the first time, I think, since series 11 that we've had art cards included in Doctor Who magazine, which again is absolutely mad to think. And all around, just a really, really smashing issue this month. Next, we have the next instalment of the Doctor Who Chronicles Bookazine series, focusing on Peter Davison's second year as the Doctor, 1983. This came out about a month ago, I think, at the end of September and I searched loads of WH Smith stores for it and just couldn't find it anywhere until the publication day for Doc 2 magazine, that previous issue that I was just looking at. Long story, but basically I usually subscribe to Doc 2 magazine, but I wasn't at home on the release date of that issue. And because there was so much exclusive series 13 content in there, I didn't want to miss out. So I thought to myself, oh, am I going to go and buy an extra copy in the shops? And yeah, that's exactly what I ended up doing. And literally right there alongside it, I couldn't believe my eyes. They had Doctor Who Chronicles 1983, which I've been looking for for so long. I haven't actually read this yet or started reading it. Well, that's weird, actually. Why is there a Cybermaster Master on that page? Five Doctors. Oh, I guess it's to do with the plot of the Five Doctors and, and the draft script. Anyway, random aside there. But yeah, as, as you can tell from, from that, I've barely even flicked through this. It's something that I was very keen to get my hands on. But now that I've got it, I'm probably going to wait a bit before I start delving into it, just because I want to kind of focus on Series 13, I guess, for the time being. And with these, you do have to sort of carve out the time, I feel, to really immerse yourself in this era, especially when, you know, like with me, it's an era that you weren't alive in and you didn't live through yourself. To round off the magazines, we have a magazine that I only get a couple of times a year. It is, of course, the Radio Times, the TV listing magazine, which always features Doctor Who on the cover at least once or twice when every series comes out, and then for the Christmas specials as well, usually in December. And yeah, fantastic to have another issue to add to the roster and to add to the collection. One thing I will say about it, actually, is the price of Radio Times these days, £3.50. Oh my god, it's just absolutely mental. I remember the days when Radio Times used to just be like a couple of quid about a decade ago or whatever. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind paying that price actually if the paper it was on wasn't so flimsy, but 
yeah, you sort of feel like you need to wear a pair of gloves or something because it's going to fall apart every time you handle one of these. I mean, I guess in fairness, it is just a fairly disposable thing. It's a sort of weekly TV listings magazine, so they're not going to spend too much money on the paper and the, the grade of paper. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice enough issue with some cool content about Series 13, as you could imagine, and some lovely other photos inside that were taken on this same set. And of course, Doctor Who is in there on the TV listings page for Sunday the 31st of October, Halloween, which is incidentally the day that this video is going to be going out. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it, or if you're watching this video after the episode has gone out, I hope it was good. So that's another issue of Radio Times to add to the collection. Always nice to have another issue in the collection, even if it is extremely overpriced. Now moving on to DVDs and Blu-ray, we have a much anticipated missing episode animation release. This is of course The Evil of the Daleks, the final end for the Daleks, or so they thought back in 1967 when this episode was first broadcast. So this is another one of those products that I was sort of scouring the shops for for quite a long time. It came out round about the same time as that issue of Doctor Who Chronicles and I kept checking the same HMV for it and they just didn't have a copy. I guess maybe they just sold their allotted stock. But anyway, basically I resorted to buying it online. Eventually I do prefer to kind of get these things in person if I can. But in the end, I just thought, yeah, I'm gonna have to resort to online. And then the copy I ordered online seemed to take an age to come and then I was away from home for a bit. And basically, uh, yeah, the, the, the sort of hype has worn off with this slightly for me, I think. When it came out, I was, very keen to get hold of my copy and to watch it, but obviously with Series 13 now being on TV, I don't know quite when I'm going to get around to watching this, really. It's a bit of a shame because, uh, yeah, as I say, I was quite excited for it when it was originally released. If I could just open it up, there we go. Uh, but yeah, it's a lovely release. The Steelbook is really, really nice. Probably one of the, the better uh, cover designs, actually. I mean, if we just look, that is a really, really nice illustration of the Emperor Dalek on the front, with, of course, your obligatory TARDIS on the front cover as well, and some characters over on the back, uh, Jamie and the Doctor in this case. Yeah, it's one of the nicer steelbooks, I think. So yeah, you know, overall, uh, I'm sure this is a really great release. I've heard fantastic things about it, and I am still really looking forward to watching it eventually. It just might not happen straight away because of Series 13 being on, and that sort of being the focus and centre of attention, really. So now onto figures. First up, we have something that I got. God, it feels like an age ago now. It was sort of in September sometime, I think. And I did actually have it at the time of recording my previous collection update. But there were so many figures in the September collection update from the B&M sets and what have you. that I just thought, hey, I'll hold this back until the October one just to sort of make a bit more of a thing of it. And also I'd recorded an unboxing of this that I wanted to release separately, uh, but that was due to go out after that collection update. So all around, it just made sense to hold this back until this one. I mean, do go and watch that unboxing if you haven't seen it already to get the lowdown on this. Basically, it's one of those sets that was at the top of my list, really, and was one that I never really thought I'd get hold of because out of all the Bean Antardises, this is probably the rarest one these days, and very foolishly, I passed on it at the time and have regretted it ever since. And basically, a guy on Twitter called Bible Black had seen that I was missing this set and reached out to me, and yeah, I just couldn't believe my luck when he agreed to send it over. Just fantastic to have this on the shelf and to sort of complete that B&M TARDIS lineup, and I feel so lucky to finally have it in the collection at long last. And continuing that theme of B&M sets, we have one of the most recent History of the Daleks sets, History of the Daleks 5, based on Power of the Daleks from 1966. Two Daleks that I wasn't in any hurry to get. You'll know as much if you've seen my previous collection update for September, in which I showed off every set apart from these guys. Basically, it was the one set out of the four from that wave that I was just kind of thinking to myself, you know, I'll get this eventually, but I'm not in any hurry to get it. I'll wait a bit until it's reduced, maybe. And then basically, just one day on a whim, I saw it in B&M and decided to pick it up. Uh, and it's actually a really, really nice set in person. The sort of silver metallic on the Daleks really makes them stand out compared to previous releases. And this is probably now, this guy on the right, my favourite slatted 60s drone Dalek. You know, your standard 
60s drone uh, just because of those paint apps. He's really sharp, a really nice looking figure. Here's the one that I now keep on the shelf because basically I've got so many 60s Daleks now that I just can't afford to keep them on the shelf. Something's got to go. And so I've taken off all my Chase Daleks and this guy has basically replaced them as my sort of standard 60s drone represented on the shelf. So yeah, he definitely surprised me, this guy. And then the Mutant Scoop Dalek as well is an extremely nice figure, to be honest, underrated. I'm not one of the people that was ever sort of that fussed about there not being a mutant on the end of the arm, particularly after hearing a comment made by Al Dewar on a podcast that basically if they had included a mutant on the end of the arm, it would have just weighed it down and down and down to the point where it would just be permanently drooped or bent or sagged or even snapped this arm. It would just sort of put so much weight on it that it wouldn't be a good thing overall. And so, yeah, a word of warning from Al Dewar, if you are one of these people that has put on a sort of custom printed mutant or resolution mutant or whatever onto the mutant scoop of your mutant scoop Dalek, a word of warning that, uh, yeah, maybe it's not a good idea to leave it on the shelf like that because it will eventually sag and maybe snap off. But yeah, that aside, these are two really, really nice Daleks. And this is definitely the underrated gem from the latest batch of sets, I've got to say. Just a really, really nice set overall, and definitely one that's worth picking up. I mean, yeah, if you've got loads of 60 Daleks already, then I guess it's one you can pass on. But if you're a bit of a completionist like me, and you're sort of umming and ahhing about whether to get this one or not, I'd say go for it. I'd say they're two really nice figures and you definitely won't regret it. And I'm looking forward to the next batch of B&M sets when they eventually come out. I think they were scheduled for mid-October. Obviously that's not happened, so fingers crossed for November sometime, I guess, maybe. And then to round off the character options 5-inch figures for this month, we have a figure from yesteryear of Captain Jack Harkness himself, or rather he who shall not be named because of all the controversial stuff about John Barrowman that's been going around. But nevertheless, you know, that wasn't gonna stop me from getting hold of this figure, which I've been missing in my collection for so many years. It's the one variant that I never got. I got the original series one blue uniform version way back when I started collecting the figures. And then a few years down the line, I got the one which is basically like this, but coatless, so with the same body underneath. Uh, just without the coats and different arms and with the revolver as well. And yeah, this one has just always eluded me. It's one of those figures that comes up fairly often on eBay loose. But I always wanted to get hold of one that was in the box just because, you know, I'm so close to sort of completing my collection of figures now that I kind of want to have that experience of opening them brand new and, you know, I, I can afford to, to wait for the right listing to come up. And yeah, it has been a while waiting for this one, it must be said. They often go for silly prices on eBay, not quite sure why. But occasionally you do get the odd listing for sort of £16, £20. I think I paid about £16 for this plus postage, which isn't a bad price, all things considered. And uh, yeah, very happy with him, very happy to have him on the shelf at long last. The coat actually is more sort of flexible and malleable and just flimsy than I thought it would be. I thought it would be more studied than this for some reason. But that's just a very minor observation rather than anything that's wrong with this figure. Uh, overall, yeah, I think it's a, a pretty solid figure and you can do all sorts of cool poses with him. And uh, yeah, it's just a shame about the context of getting a Captain Jack figure in the year of our Lord 2021 when all that stuff's been going round. It just sort of ruins the experience somewhat. But it's nice to have him nevertheless and just really great to fill this gap in the collection. And then to round things off for this month, we have two very topical items indeed. Two Titan vinyl three inch figures of 13th Doctor. Now I was vaguely aware that these existed. I think I'd seen photos of them online, etc. I'd never seen them in shops in person. Up until the other week when I was in Newcastle and I thought I'd go and check out the Forbidden Planet in Newcastle because it's not a store that I'd ever been to before. I was curious to see what Doctor Who merch they'd got in stock. Wasn't particularly planning to pick anything up, to buy anything. But I saw these on the shelf and basically I just couldn't resist. 
For one thing, they're incredibly small. They're only three inches tall each or thereabouts in scale with all the other Titan vinyl waves they did a few years back. Uh, but one advantage these ones have over those is that they're not blind boxed. You can actually see which one you're getting which uh, does help and I think that was one of the failings of that line to be honest because you never quite knew what you were going to get. But also both of these were marked down from $7.99 to just $2.99, three quid each for both of these figures. I thought to myself that's an absolute steal, I cannot resist and especially with Series 13 or Flux coming up as well. I thought it was meant to be, you know, that I'd, I'd spotted these in Forbidden Planet just a couple of weeks beforehand. Yeah, it would have almost been a crime to, to not have picked them up because they're so tiddly and so cute and they're so cheap as well. And, you know, because of how tiny they are as well, it's not like I had to fret about where I was going to put them on the shelf because they just slot in basically anywhere. They literally take up no space whatsoever. So, yeah, all around two really nice figures and great additions to the collection. Very topical obviously for Series 13 or Flux and uh, yeah just a really nice coincidence that I had the opportunity to buy these just a couple of weeks before the series started airing. So there we have everything I added to my Doctor Who collection in October 2021. Yeah I thought I'd leave off the Shard of Tardis set just because technically that was a September purchase and it has also got its own dedicated unboxing video so it's not like it's being short served in that regard. Have you bought any of the new releases here? Doctor Who Magazine maybe, Doctor Who Chronicles, The Radio Times or Evil of the Daleks? Do let me know in the comments below if you've got hold of any of those. And yeah, I just really hope you've enjoyed the video in general. If you did, please do leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe, especially if you're after some Doctor Who Series 13 slash Flux content, because oh boy, there'll be a lot of that coming over the coming weeks. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next month for another Doctor Who collection update. Goodbye for now, guys.